I just woke up from this extremely sobering dream. In the dream, I was on this um, boat. It wasn't a huge, huge boat, but I was on it with, um, like, I knew in the dream that it was my entire family. For some reason, I just knew it was my entire family. But it wasn't um, the same family necessarily that I have now. It was kind of weird. Like, I was in the dream, and I wasn't myself. It, okay, let me explain. Like, myself, I was this, um, for some reason, 5'11 comes to me. So I was like 5'11, and I was real dark. Like, all of us was real, real dark. Like, not like now, not this caramel skin complexion like I have now. And um, everybody was so beautiful. The woman, women were all very voluptuous, and the men were very muscle-bound, like... You know, I I research, you know, like most people in America um, who study black history. And um, I looked at my ancestors' um, pictures, but the ones, the pictures, I, I always was looking for pictures from right then when they first started the slave trade, and I never could find any. And um, all the pictures that I saw was much later after they started it. And I, this was must have been right when they started it. And I can tell you from personal experience, every picture that I've seen before, the men that I saw in this dream were at least twice the size of these the guys in the pictures that I've seen. I mean, they was way bigger than them. Super muscle-bound guys, very tall guys. They was not short at all. I mean, you're talking um, the, probably the shortest one would have been 6'1". And, and they was way taller than that, up until like maybe six five, six six. They was tall, and um, in this, at least in my family, they was. I don't, I can't speak for every African and in in, that was taken in the world, but my my, and I knew this was my family, and um, I saw um, myself, but I I looked different, and my dad was there. And my dad, right now, his skin is a little lighter than mine, but in the dream, he was taller, he was real muscle-bound, and he was real, real dark. So I'm assuming that the mother and daughter that I saw, even though it felt like it was me, and um, I knew that was my dad, it was probably like our ancestors or something, you know, way back in the day. And um, I recognize a few other family members as well, but um, definitely myself and my dad. And um, a lot of my siblings, I have t I have nine brothers and sisters right now, seriously. And I saw, like, um, a, a lot of them uh, that I recognized in the dream. Like, they didn't look like themselves, but they I knew it was them. And so, anyway, um, so we were dressed like African days. You know, we was we just on this boat, having a good time, laughing and giggling. You know, it was dark time. Um, and we had music going, like somebody was doing music, and, um, and we, we was cooking food on the boat, and we was just having a good time, and I remember feeling like we had a good life. If it, I could, like, feel our life was so good. We was on this boat with our husbands and our children, and we were happy. We were having, we were just having a good night, a good time, and um, I remember, like, thinking, you know, how great our lives, lives was. And um, we, and I knew we was not poor, you know, and I've heard that before that they try to say that the Africans was just, you know, rolling around in the jungle. And I'm telling you from this dream, I knew that we was not poor. We had money. We had gold. We had, I, I we had it on us. <laughs> we had it on us and we was so beautiful and I knew we, we had wealth and we was happy. And um, we had this nice boat and everything, you know. And I don't remember ever hearing of uh, any of the Africans had boats, but I, apparently they did because that's what God showed me. And we had a nice sized boat, and we was on there, and we was just having a good time, and um, and everything. And everybody was dressed really nice, and it was you know everybody hair I'm saying was done so beautifully, and you know I got to see the you know the hair and everything, and we was just so beautiful, and all the guys were so handsome, and we was just having a good time. All of a sudden, these three white guys came and um, they were screaming to the top of their lungs. I mean, they were screaming like Tarzan or something, just ah, just screaming all over the place and telling us 
to to come with them now and sh- they were shooting and up in the air and talking about how they was going to shoot us and we was looking like what on earth is this we was just let's f- flabbergasted we was in shock and um uh Everybody was so taken off guard, and they were just coming up to the men. These and these, in my dream, the white guys were so like they, you know, what I mean, they looked like regular people today. They was not muscle bound. They was not. I mean, seriously, they was like regular guys, and they just coming up to these big, huge black guys and just manhandling them, and with these guns and and screaming like crazy, and everybody was afraid except for me and I was I remember looking at them so I know this was probably my ancestor and I looked at the dudes like I didn't say anything but I looked at them like you're not gonna fight like what's going on and so anyway they was just going with them because they was in shock everybody was in so much shock and they were screaming they they wouldn't stop screaming they it was crazy and in the dream these white guys they had on these hats and these outfits they they looked like something out of George Washington days and um seriously it was like we was back in time I mean, it was like back in the, those days, whatever days those was, and they was dressed like that, and um, and we was just like African looking, and and um, they just screaming and screaming and screaming and just gathering people, just manhandling the guys, and like any guy that looked real real muscle bound, they was just beating them, just just beating them with the guns and stuff, and like 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 get with us now, and nobody was really fighting them back because they was like shooting the guns and they were scaring everybody. And so I went to hide, and a couple of my other siblings and um, children, some, I saw some small children that I didn't recognize, and um, we went to go hide. And then um, they they gathered everybody and, and took everybody, and I didn't know where they was taking them because I was hiding. And then um, uh, after they was gathering everybody, I was hiding for a long time. Me and my a few siblings and the kids that was hiding, we here for a long time. And then all of a sudden, the, the guys came back, and they were screaming. But only two of them came. No, 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 I take that back. No, all three of them came back. But um, they screamed, and they said, anybody that is hiding, if you don't come out now and we find you, we're going to kill you. We're going to kill you. And I remember thinking in my head, you can kill me because I ain't coming out, and I ain't going with you nowhere. Because, I mean, these guys, they to us, I remember feeling like they look funny looking, like, you know, to us, we was like, what are they? And and they scream, and they well, wouldn't stop screaming. And it was, I, I was, I remember thinking it was the devil in the dream. I was like, they're devils. And they're just screaming and screaming. And um, I was like, I'm not going with them nowhere. I'd rather be dead. I don't care. But all my brothers and sisters, all my siblings, all the children came out of hiding and, and went with them because they, they was so afraid. They were so afraid of these guys. But you know what? I, in the dream, I didn't feel like I had never seen a, a white person because I actually remember reading that before. They said the Africans had never seen a white person. I did not remember feeling that at all, at, at all. But I was I was just like feeling like they was um, weird and funny looking because, you know, maybe the way they was. Yeah, I remember thinking the way they was dressed and the guns and the hats and everything because I remember looking at the hats like, what is that? You know, but I didn't feel like I had never seen a white person because I didn't. Yeah, I never said, oh, they're white, you know, but it was just weird the way they came at us. And um, so anyway, um, they went with them, my siblings that was hiding, except for me. I was the only one. And they rounded everybody up. And I heard my sister in the dream. I knew this sister and she told them, she said, my sister is in there hiding and I was listening to that, and I was like, I'm going to kill her. I was so mad. I, could, I was like, she totally, totally just turned me in, you know. And she put an Uncle Tom on me as well as she did. But anyway, um, she was trying to cooperate because she thought if they cooperated, and I knew that too in a dream, she felt like everything would be okay. They just needed to cooperate, you know. They didn't understand. We, we all didn't understand what on earth they wanted with us. And um, she was thinking we can just cooperate. And um, so it wasn't like she was trying to pull on Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom actually knew what he was doing. But she actually thought that, you know, we could we could, uh, we could, could just cooperate. And if everybody could cooperate, nobody would get killed. So she was probably more worried for me. But in the dream, it didn't feel like that. I just felt like she totally turned me in. 
and I was really upset about it. And so I see her come with the three guys, and, and where I was hiding at, they had to come around, like around a circle, like they couldn't get through the, um, they couldn't like come straight to me, they had to go around like, like a circle. As they're coming around the circle, I looked up and I'm seeing their head as they're coming around, and I scooted out of the place that I was at, and I scooted around the circle a little bit, and out of the view, and then they went back the same way they came, thank God, because if they would have kept coming out that way, they would have, around the circle, they would have found me again. So then when they went back, because she was like, she was right here. I'm telling you, she was right here. And they was like, oh, come on, you know, she's probably on the boat. Let's come on, you know, they, they're probably thinking she's stalling for time. And so then I scooted back into place. And then, and then, um, they was leaving out, and then she ran back, and she was like, I'm telling you, she was right here. And, she, and when I scooted back in the place and she ran back over there, she saw me, and she said, see, she's right here. And I was like, oh, no, oh, man, and some reason, oh, yeah, that's right, I almost forgot. When she said that it, I, her sister was on a the boat, there was another little girl that backed her up. And for some reason, when they turned on me like that, in the dream, they look lighter. They look like light-skinned black people all of a sudden. They went from being real dark to light-skinned. Look, I'm just telling my dream. I don't know what it means, but that's what happened. And so when she came and turned on me like that, for all of a sudden, she looked light-skinned looking. I, it was weird. But anyway, I was so mad. And they, they handled me real roughly and, and pulled me off the floor. And they put these iron... Um, handcuffs on my wrist and these things were so thick and I knew they was iron and it was like really thick and I couldn't wiggle my hand out of them for nothing it was I remember thinking like these things are like perfectly made for my wrist what on earth and um like they was like it was no wiggle room really and they they put this put them on me like that and um and and it was like they had ripped my clothes a little bit when they was handling me some of my clothes came, so part of my, my breasts, and I, I had these huge breasts, but anyway, part of my breasts was showing, and I was feeling so ashamed and so violated, and I remember feeling like I'm, I need clothes, like what on earth, you know, and, and they were the screaming, both of them were screaming in one ear each, they're screaming and screaming at me, and telling me how they was going to beat me, and they was going to rape me, and they was going to do all kind of things to me. And just, I couldn't even understand everything they was saying. They was just screaming and screaming so loud in my ear. It was crazy. And the other guy, so I had two of them handling me. The other one went to take my, my sister, and that's when I saw where they was putting everybody. Because I couldn't understand why my, my family wasn't running and screaming for help. And, um, and... <sighs> They was putting everybody on this real big, big, I mean, this ship was huge. It was way bigger than the, sh the ship that, the, you know, that that we had. And um, everybody, when I went on the boat, they had locked everybody in a place. So that's why they couldn't scream. Everybody was locked in. It was like cages. Like they was locked down um, and locked, locked. Some of them was on the floor, uh, locked down in a place on the floor. And then it was like a cage that locked them in even further. And then it was like other people locked in other places. It was all over. It, it was like, you know, now that I think about it, it was, it was like some night at a zoo or something. It was, it was all locked up. It was crazy. And you see these big, strong black men, just these beautiful, voluptuous women all locked up. It was crazy. And so everybody was real scared. And want, we was all wondering, like, what are they doing with us? What is going on? And then um, when they put us on the, the ship, it's like God advanced the dream into the future, because let me tell you what happened. So when they put us on the ship, they didn't, put, they didn't lock me in a place yet. I'm still in these iron things on my wrists and everything. And um, I, I was thinking, I'm not cooperating with them. I don't trust them. I'm not going to let them take me. They're going to have to kill me. I don't care. I'm ready to die. I remember, I remember thinking that, like, I don't care. You know, you better kill me, because uh, it ain't happening. So anyway, um, when they put us on the ship, both both that's when I saw in the dream that both ships was docked. We wasn't out in the water. We was docked, and we was docked in, uh, to this grass, and you know instead of sand, it was grass, and it was right like right off the I guess the ocean, and um, and this is why I say we went up in time, and I looked ahead, and um, it was like um, a football game. 
but it was they the people was dressed like the 1950s like um the women had the pigtails on both sides of their uh head and they had the like a 1950 cheerleader outfit on um the and uh it looked like a high school football game it wasn't a professional one because it was hardly nobody there like it was a you know a few parents you know um you know some the cheerleading team and the football players and it was one cop there and um and he had a gun and even him he looked like something out of the 1950s and to me now you know out of the dream to me he looked like a mall cop but anyway he looked like something out of the 1950s and so i i saw that it was people out there and i just wiggled away from these two guys that was handling me before they locked me in a place and i jumped off that boat and i took off running and i ran into this grassy area screaming and, and like my my breast was exposed and i'm so they the people was looking at me all crazy because the way i was dressed and i was screaming like they kidnapped my whole family they kidnapped my whole family help me help me help me please somebody help me and um and so they was taking me serious. Like they stopped the game and everybody was looking at me like, what's going on? And then I came to the one cop that was there and thank God, you know, he had a gun. You know, I say that now out of the dream, but he had a gun. And in the dream, he was fumbling with his gun all nervous. And I remember thinking, what is he going to do? And he was a white cop. Like all of these football players and the cheerleaders, they was all white. And um, I remember thinking, what is he going to do? You know, these guys are crazy. They're They're screaming and... They got these, this, it's more than one of them. I was thinking, like, it's three of them, and it's only one of him. Well, what is he going to do? But he was brave. Like, I was thinking he need to call for backup is what I remember thinking in my head. But he just went, he just went in. He got, he fumbled his gun out of the place, and he took his gun out, and he ran. And, it, and then, then um, I was like, yes, yeah, two of them over there to your left, like, trying to help him because I didn't want them to shoot him because I was so concerned because I was trying to save my family. And um, he looked to the left, and, and he it was two of them there, but they didn't have their guns out because they was looking at all the people, and they was so uh, they was they was afraid. Like they didn't even shoot at me when I ran because they saw the people, and they didn't want to draw attention to themselves, and they didn't know what to do. And then this this cop went up to them, and he just manhandled them and just threw them to the ground. I was like, wow, like he really handled them real roughly, and threw them to the ground and everything and um handcuffed him and i was screaming you know they my my family's on a boat and it's another one he's on a boat and actually i don't think i told him it was another one on the boat i might have but i'm not sure but anyway i remember screaming for my family my family's on the boat my family get them off that boat and everything and he went and um he was helping them get off the boat so you know i i think that god let me have this dream like this because there is a lot of significance. I, I, you know, I have to really sit down and write this down. And I can tell you all, like, I don't sound sleepy because I woke up from this dream and I was so tired and I wanted to go back to sleep and God would not let me go back to sleep for nothing. He kept saying, record the dream, record the dream, record the dream. So this is a extremely important dream. And, um, you know, actually I plan to like take a notepad and really write down everything that I saw because I think what God was showing me was like, I think a lot of it was um, sort of symbology, like, you know, uh, showing me, you know, through time what they went through. And, um, you know, it was a very sobering thing for me to actually have been there and felt that, even though I was only there for a short period of time. I just saw, you know, I, you know a little part of what, what they went through. And um, for some reason, God wanted me to know that he wouldn't have gave me this dream had he not, you know. These are my ancestors, and um, this matters to him. So this is definitely a dream I plan to take apart and really go through and, and dissect. And I'll probably remember more um, as I do that later. But, um, yeah, you know, I just thank God for, um, for, for getting us out of slavery. Oh, man, it was horrible, you guys. I'm telling you, it was horrible. And I don't care what race you are. I don't care um, what race you are. You ought to have some remorse for the people that went through that. You ought to have some, something in your heart should pain for what they, what they did to, to my ancestors, to these, these unsuspecting people, you know. And I've heard a million times, you know, they said that, you know, well, black people help, you know, sell them to slavery. I'm not even going to touch that because that's not what God showed me. This is what I was shown, you know, I'm not going to 
um, say for sure that happened or deny it. But this is what I was shown. We was just having a good time and we was taken like animals and it was crazy. And yeah, in the dream, I could understand what these cops were saying, though. But I have read before that even the slaves back then couldn't understand the language that um, that these cops, I mean, that, not, not cops, I don't mean to say cops, that these masters or whatever, I could understand the, what their language in the dream. But back then in real life, they probably just heard a bunch of screaming and screaming and was just like, you know, they motioned and, and followed the motions. Who knows, you know, but this is what I saw. This is what God showed me. Um, so I'm taking this extremely serious and I plan to really dissect this dream. Anyway, God bless you all.